You know, I don't know about you guys. I really, truly want to see God. I, someday, I want to be able to stand just, just somewhere in his presence where he would, he would be in the, the, the same physical room as me, and I, and I would be able to just like be in awe of his presence. There's something I'm continually reminded about as, as I go about my day-to-day life, as I, as, I watch my, uh, as I watch my body age, as I watch uh, my children grow up, as I watch my parents age, is that we are so very, very, very temporary. Like our presence here on earth, it's just, it's not permanent. God never designed it to be permanent. Uh, I mean, l- let's be honest, there's moments of life that, that if you looked at it, like, objectively, you're like, ugh, that's just miserable. I remember uh, one, one football practice that I had when I was in high school. It was about, it was a day like today, and uh, it was probably anywhere from like 40 to 45 degrees. The, the rain was coming down. It was blowing sideways. Uh, it may have even been below, below 40 degrees. You know, Coach Stein, I'll, I'll take, I'll take, uh, below 20 in snow over 38 in rain any day as a, as a football player. And you know that. It, it does something. That rain does something to your joints. And I don't get it. I don't know what it is. If it's snow, it doesn't do it. But if it's rain and your skin gets wet, I'm not kidding you. We got done. We had our usual like two and a half, three hour practice or whatever. I walked in and I, I, could, not, I could not move my fingers. Like, I didn't wear gloves. I played, a, I played a position where I had to handle the ball, and I didn't wear gloves because it was a wet practice, and our, our gloves were no good back then. And, like, my hands were just like this. And I wanted so badly to get out of my wet clothes, my wet equipment, and, like, I couldn't untie anything. This was me. My, my fingers were just like this. And, and I remember going into the bathroom, and... I turned the, the faucet on, like with my hands like this, and I knew not to put hot water on them because that'd be really painful and it'd be like bad. So I put on like lukewarm water and I just put my hands under there, and I'm not kidding you, I wanted to cut my hands off. It ached so bad. And like slowly, my, my fingers like started going like this. Like I, I had thought I'd done like permanent damage to my hands. And, but I so badly, wanted to not be in that circumstance more than anything on earth. And I was like, those moments just remind me, man, if, if heaven's like, <laughs> heaven's not going to be like that. Heaven is not going to be 38, rainy, I can't move my fingers. I cannot wait to be in the presence of God. And, and the whole reason that I, that I would take this stage on Wednesday nights, that your adult leaders would be here, is they have a desire for the same thing for you is that they want you to see God someday. When, when I hear um, Matthew chapter five, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I go, I need that to be me. Because I, I need to have a pure heart because I want to see God. Read this, read this scripture with me. Just follow along while I read this. Uh, we got it set up. It'll be up on the screen for you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you because uh, when people insult you, persecute you, falsely accuse you, and say all kinds of evil against you because of me, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets, who were before you. I think about that, that idea of being blessed. And it has nothing to do with happiness. It doesn't mean you're going to be happy all the time. It means I have the status of being blessed by God. If I have a pure heart, for I will see God someday. I want to see God. I want you to see God. 
And so what does it mean to be the pure in heart? Because I'll tell you guys, as I, as I look at myself, as I look at our adult leaders, even after talking with a few of my adult leaders right before we came in here, we are, if you're going to judge our actions, we are not a pure group of people. Am I right? If I'm going to judge you by your, your behavior today or your behavior this week or last weekend, uh, am I right? Is that honest? Like, you guys are not perfect. I am not perfect. Like, I, I got angry. I lost my temper. Anybody else lose their temper this week? Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, anybody else say anything they shouldn't have said this week? Anybody do that? Any honest people in here? Okay, we've got a few honest people in here. Okay. Anybody, anybody lie this week? Man, what a great group of people we're, we're hanging out with tonight, right? We're like, man, we're in church. All these people should be perfect. But it's not the way it is. And you guys, we're starting this series on dating. And I want you to think about this for a minute. We're going to spend two weeks on dating. We're going to talk about our motives tonight. And next week, we're going to talk about the nitty gritty. You guys are always wondering this question of like, how far is too far? Uh, you're wondering like, like, what's the right way to date? How should I, how should I approach people? And, and like, we're going to get into that big time next week. And I, I think it's going to be a real awakening thing for you. Um, I'm not going to approach it from like a, 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 a prudish standpoint. I'm going to talk with you guys bluntly about the stuff that you're facing week in, week out, uh, within your schools, within your friendships, your relationships, your dating relationships. Uh, we're going to be really frank about it. But I feel like the starting point is this, is what is the motivation of your heart for dating? Because we've already determined we're a jacked up crew in this room, right? So how in the world, what are you going to get if you put two jacked up people together in any kind of relationship? What are you going to get? Someone said it, I heard it, a jacked up relationship, right? Okay, how many of you guys in this room have had relationship issues? Man, boyfriend or girlfriend cheated on you. Uh, you caught him with your friend. I have no idea. Man, you got, you got that text. You got that text and it was meant for someone else. Anybody had that happen? That's like how you broke up. Like you got the wrong text. That's like, man, that was awkward. So that's what's going to happen. And, and for some reason, for some reason, and this is what we're going to talk about a lot next week, we feel the need for these relationships. We feel like there's something missing or wrong with us if we're not in one of these relationships. So we'll constantly pursue them. And, and if we don't have one, we start to ask questions like, what's wrong with me? Why won't anybody like me? Why won't anybody date me? You look at yourself in the mirror and you go, how can I make myself more dateable? Is it, do I need a haircut? Do I need different makeup? Do I need a different pair of jeans? Do I need a different shirt? Do I need to work out more? Uh, do I need to eat more ice cream? You know? I heard fluffy is coming back, so like the fluffy body shape is a good thing? No? Is that not coming back? I got people clapping that, they're like, yeah, fluffy! So, anyways. But... Here's the place, students. I want to ask you, what is your motivation? What is your motivation for a relationship? Maybe I should ask it this way. What is your end game? If you're going to start dating now, students, what direction are you taking that relationship? What is your purpose for that relationship? I don't want to see any hands the rest of the night, but if, if you're in a relationship right now or you're thinking about someone that you like, I mean, man, prom just got over and everybody was all dressed nice and whatever. Like, if you're thinking about a relationship, where is the end game? I mean, honestly, middle school students, what's the point? Where, what is the end game for you in a dating relationship? Because I, I, I'll tell you, there's, you have two options. Either you're going to sit here tonight and you're going to tell me, Josh, you know what? Um, 
I feel like that our relationship together is going to help us grow closer to God. That's choice A. Or you don't have a plan, and I will tell you guys that by default, if you start that relationship without a plan, your purpose is that together we're going to draw further away from God. It's, it's one of those two things. Like some of you are like getting mad at me right now. I, I know there's probably high school students going, man, he just didn't get it. He's old. No, I got told I look like I'm 23 just because I have a quarter inch of hair now. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I, I look like I'm 33, Stanton. 34. 43? I look old. I'm hoping to see if I have some gray hair. But, um, and I hope I have some because I feel like I've earned it. There's... Um, but you have to decide that. What is your motive? What is your motive for your relationships? Because I'm telling you that if you don't have a pure motive, if your motive for that does not start with a pure heart, you're destined for destruction. And here's the thing that frustrates me about those relationships then, if they're not started with the root, with the, that purpose of a pure heart, is that not only is it going to affect your relationship with God, but you're also going to affect this person that you brought into your world next to you. Does that make sense? And so we really have to examine that. Because if there's any area that if you, that if you, if you screw up, if you mess up, that, that it's going to impact you for years and years and years and years. It's this one. And I'm not talking about like STDs. Your schools can talk to you about all that stuff. I'm talking about the emotional damage students of giving yourself to another person in, in any manner. Any manner physically. Because someday you'll, you'll be standing in a, in a church sanctuary like this. Or maybe one different. Maybe you'll be the groom standing here. You'll be the bride in the back of the room. And at some moment, the music will start playing and everybody will stand up and, the, and you'll be the bride walking in or you'll be the groom standing here and you'll be looking back at that doorway or you'll be looking forward to that altar and you will regret any bit of who you are that you left with a different person besides them. And it will get very, very real that that's exactly what happened. So I want you, I wish I could fast forward for you so that you could see this. It's not something that I can do. I can just speak to you from life experience and any of your small group leaders can speak to you from their life experience of what they've experienced regarding that. And it's true across the board. You will regret every moment that you held another 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 guy or another girl's hand, every time that your lips were against another person's lips, you will regret every moment of those pieces that you gave to someone else other than your spouse. Think about that for just a minute. So what are your motives? You know, I really, truly, deeply want to see God someday. Scripture says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. So some of you guys, some of you guys tonight, in regard to this relationship thing, some of you, um, if we're going to take a little vote right now, some of you guys are like, uh, would admit, you'd go, yeah, man, I, I've really messed this up. This is something I've really jacked up from the beginning. Or I'm jacking it up right now. Like, I, like I'm, I'm really making a lot of mistakes right now in the relationship that I'm in. And some of you are sitting here going, man, I need help. Some of you are going, yeah, I'm making a lot of mistakes and, and I love it. I love every minute of it. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. This is the great thing that I appreciate about God. He has always looked from the inside out. Um, 
Pastor Scott talked on Sunday about um, King David. Uh, David was a guy that wasn't necessarily anything terribly impressive. Uh, he was the youngest son in a large family, uh, had to do all the chores. Any of you youngest, youngest siblings, younger siblings, you're the ones that have to take out the trash, pick the poop out of the yard, scoop the cat poop, whatever. The worst jobs, they get passed down. I was the youngest sibling. I know what that feels like, okay? When Israel was looking for a king, there was a prophet that came to David's family. All of David's siblings, his older brothers, were impressive looking. Samuel looked at him and said, no, is there another? Looked at the next one, no, is there another? Looked at the next one, no, is there another? Did this all the way down the line. And, and he came to his dad and he said, or came to um, Jesse, David's dad, and said, is there anybody else? Because these guys aren't the ones. He goes, well, I got, I got David. He looked at David and he said, this is the one. Scripture says, man looks at the outward, but God looks at the heart. And students, this is the thing. When we look at our lives, there's a lot of actions that we get wrong. But God always starts at the heart level to deal with us. And that's where we have to look at this with our, with, with our attitude towards dating and relationships. You have to look at it at the heart level. And you have to allow God to deal with it. You're going to argue and you're going to go, oh, but Josh, you, you, you're just old and you're outdated and blah, 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 blah. And I'm saying, look, don't listen to me. Allow God to examine your motives. Be honest with yourself. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? Because, because God wants to examine your motives very intently. And he wants to ask you if you have a pure heart. He's saying, okay, I don't care if you've screwed up. I don't care if you've made mistakes. I want to know, do you have a pure heart? And allow me to work on that heart. Because here's what will happen. When God works from the inside out, your, your life does start to change. And that's the only way lasting change happens. Change doesn't happen just because you start coming to a church and sitting in a chair and raising your hands or going to your small group and answering a question or whatever. Change starts to happen, students, when you allow God to examine who you are and you start to be honest with God about who you are. That's when your heart starts to get to a pure point. And that's, that's where where Matthew chapter five, when it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. That has nothing to do with perfection. That has everything to do with the motivation of your heart. Because you know what? I, I've got a week ahead of me. You guys, I'm gonna make mistakes. I'm gonna yell again. I'm gonna lose my temper again. I'll say something I shouldn't have said again. And I think as you guys look at your week going forward, you go, there's going to be stuff that you're going to do again. But what I love to see is how God has changed me from the moment that I surrendered my life to him. He started to change who I was, and it wasn't immediate. Slowly, God took me and took the desires of my heart and started to change the desires of my heart. They were no longer for destruction. I remember before I met Cassie, my wife, that I had virtually said, you know what, God? I get it. I, I'm okay, if, I'm okay if, I, if I don't get married. If that's what you have for me, I'm okay with that because I get enough, I have enough in you. And I'm very grateful that God brought me a wonderful wife that that uh, to be by my side for as long as I have breath, well, that we've argued about who's going to die first. We'll see. Uh, but it, it depends if she doesn't kill me for being stupid. So, you know, but anyways, um, I'm grateful for that. But my identity isn't tied up in that. Or my kids. And so as we look at these relationships... I just really want you to examine the desires of your heart. Are they pure? Do you allow God to look at them? Because if they're not, guys, you're headed for destruction with your life, and you're dragging someone's life with you. Okay? Um, man, really, really kind of like 
dark, serious type sermon type thing tonight. That's, that's okay, um, because uh, we're going to continue to worship a little bit tonight. Uh, we're going to get to continue to discuss this, this idea of how a pure heart should impact our speech, our actions, every aspect of our world. And uh, in the next week also, we're going to get to dive into uh, like the real nitty gritty of, of the dating piece and, and where, where a woman's mind is at in that and where a guy's mind is in that and what's good and what God wants and, and all of that. But it all starts with the desires of your heart. Because if those desires aren't right, students, if they're not lined up with what God wants, we're in trouble. So we're gonna pray, we're gonna worship, we're gonna have some baptisms, which is gonna be awesome. And uh, we'll worship in witnessing to those. God, uh, God, I thank you for tonight. I thank you for these students. Lord, I know that as we grow up, it can be very difficult to examine exactly what it is that you want from us. Father, I know that it can be very hard to surrender all of who we are to you. I know that can be difficult. I know that's hard. Father, it's everything that you require, though, is exactly that, us to surrender all of it to you. So Father, tonight as we worship, I I pray that you would start on the inside as you clean us. You start with us at the heart level. Help us to be honest with our actions and with our attitudes and with our, our thought, our speech. Start with our heart and allow that to just work its way out. Pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen.